Right. It it's still me. It's just less hair. What Sorry. Happened? You you had a you had a, a, a had strange a encounter with some clippers. I did. Yes, and the clippers the clippers won. Sorry. Make my well, face look a little. Know, I get it though. It's so much easier. I mean, it, it it's easier. I mean, look at my friend Scott Dennis. He just he he's got a little bit of hair, but he just shaves it off. Scott like, goes all the way. I listen. I, I th people think, wow, you shaved your head. No, there's still something. There's still some up there. So, did you have a barber do that? Is that what you? Yes. This was Does your mother by... like that, Eric? This was... <laughs> well, you know when we, you know that we, I do a Friday Zoom call with mom and dad, and I had told her a few days earlier that I got my hair cut. This was actually a. To, this was Tuesday, so I thought by Friday it'll grow in a little bit. And uh, no, not enough to make Mama happy. No, Mom, she. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna lie. She does like my hair. Why does it seem like uh, my nose is a little extra red? I don't know. Um, no, I mean she definitely liked it uh, thicker and and longer. But look, she she's fine with it. She's still. I mean, I am still her son. As far as I know, she uh, didn't disown you. Didn't disown me, and uh, we even talked about a visit. Um, I'm hoping, and this could impact uh, one of our shows, but I, I'm hoping, and it's all going to depend on whether I get vaccinated in time. But I would love to go see my mom for Mother's Day. Oh well, and, that would be very, very, very cool. And I don't know if you know this, but my mom's birthday um, and Mother's Day are, are always in the same uh, week. So Mother's Day this year, I believe, is the ninth. My mom's birthday is four days later. And um, I usually go home for Father's Day because that kind of falls in between. Well, I usually go Wait home. Wait a minute. You can go home because they've both been vaccinated. You're no threat to them. Yeah, that's true, but well, I, just as long as you don't go out and hang around some bar first. <laughs> well, you know me, I'm a, I'm a. You know, I I'm used a to. I, know. I do all my drinking at home. I'm sorry. That's I mean, this is the. What do you think I go after the shows? You know. No, I don't. I, I do. I'm not a bar person. Never was. No, not really. But anyway. So I usually, sorry if I'm boring uh, Beth Ann and Donna Militello and Jonathan with this, but you know, this is just our little spiel before we bring our, our guest on in about six minutes. So I usually go home for Passover. Oh, what, uh, what day does that start? Well, this year it starts a little earlier, it starts on the 27th of March. So like less than that three weeks. That is early. So I go to my aunt's house for that, but my aunt is not having, uh, she is holding off on having a big group this year. Um, so there won't be a Seder this year. So I, I won't go uh, home. For, yeah, it's fine. But so normally I go home for Passover and then, uh, and then I go home again around uh, June for Father's Day. But since I'm not going to be home for Passover and I haven't, I wasn't home for Thanksgiving. I'm thinking, you know what? Mother's Day, mom's birthday. I think we're going to make it happen in a couple of months. And I guess you're right. I guess technically if I've only gotten maybe if I've gotten one of the shots and not both, but they've gotten both of theirs. Yeah, I, would, I don't even, I don't see a problem with that. Honestly, it'd be fine. It'd so be fine. anyway, um, I don't. and the good thing is, is by the time I go home, if I go home for mother's day in May, uh, my hair will, my hair will have grown in nicely. So, uh, I would never actually go home with my hair looking quite. I wouldn't. She wouldn't let you in. <laughs> I, yeah, I'd be ringing you. Know, be just ringing the doorbell. Hello, hey. <laughs> you know, I'd have to try to break into my, my my parents' house. Anyway, how how enough about me and my hair? How are how are you? Your hair looks I'm good. Uh, impeccable as always. Thank How's you. Your... Uh, I'm all right. It's uh, you know, uh, there's all as the normal amount of drama in, in everyone's life, you know, that goes on. By the way, I meant to, I was going to mention this last week on the show, and I didn't, and we discussed it briefly on on a phone call we had this week. Yes, people should know Nancy and I do occasionally talk, um, and do our own show over the phone. But 
Um, I wanted to mention though that uh, Rochester Magazine wrote a nice, uh, did a nice write-up on you. Fifty-five plus. Fifty-five plus. Uh, it's. I've got the. Yeah, that's the New York version. Cheese. Now, now they did one in the, in the, the Rochester Magazine. Because you are a Hall of Fame inductee. Yes. Uh, so give us the update. It was supposed to happen well, last we think year. We're clearly not going to be doing it. It's supposed to happen in April sometime. But they're sure. shooting. You told me that they are shooting possibly. Shooting for the fall now, which which okay. can probably happen. I mean. Um, right. You know, if 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 the foolish people that don't want to get the shot don't get it, that they're the ones that will get sick. If I if everybody else that cares about. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So they. I, I think once we get everybody going on with the vaccine, I think we're going to be, let's go, let's roll. I know. I, mean, I know. I can't wait to, uh, I can't wait to, 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 to get the shots. I know, I know you've got shots coming your way. Yeah. 21st is my first one. 21st is your yep. first one. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited every day. More and more people are, are getting vaccinated. So, um, so that has to be a good sign, you know? Um, so, but we also have to remind people that this, the weather is going to be warming up here and just because there's vaccines available and weather's actually, the weather's going to be warming up this week. We're going to be getting into I know, I know, I saw that. I know. We don't want, we don't, again, we don't want people to, uh, to think that, oh, you know what? It, it we're done. You know, COVID is, is, is in the past because it, it it's not yet, but but we're certainly making a lot of good progress and, and collectively as, as a country, um, hopefully we're going to be in an even better place than we are now a couple of months from now. So should we say hello to our uh, esteemed panel tonight, our usual cast of thousands? Well, some of the girls like your haircut. Well, I know, uh, who is it? Was it, De was it you? Wait, was it Deborah Ford? There's Deborah. I, was it Deborah? Who said last week she liked my long hair? But sorry, Deborah, I, I had to do it. But um, it's because well, you, you don't want to put updo in it. You know, you know who said she, she likes my haircut is my dear friend Renee, who I just spent a nice weekend, she, I believe. She in, always does everything in caps. Renee, like, yeah, you have. That's the thing about Renee. I don't know what it is, but even when she shoots me a text message, it's it's caps. Um, she likes to be very authoritative with her messages so um but yeah renee just had a nice time and i think it was uh, for, uh st petersburg florida for the weekend but hello to to uh, deborah I miss and, florida i miss and going I, I always went down i'm sorry i didn't, didn't mean to interrupt you my love no 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 you but talk about florida because no, uh, i was just saying i miss going down i used to go down every window i had a wonderful gig in miami that i always went to at a great jazz club it was called the van dyke it was van on dyke. south beach and I'm, oh God, I miss going down there. And then I played the arts garage and all oh, those things that all happened. Hopefully they can happen again. By the way, uh, Beverly Church Hogan, uh, good evening, you two lovelies. Love your haircut, Eric. You look fab, Nancy. And I just want to, I'm going to do this for you, Beverly. I want to say gonna, a quick promotion. Uh, this is her new recording, which she was nice enough to send me. It's called can't get oh, out of this. Isn't that lovely of her? Can't get out of this mood. She's got uh, Clayton Cameron and and uh, Graham Dector, John Prue, who joined us for a show, produced it, um, and it's a wonderful recording. Um, That's what you know who people need to understand who Clayton Cameron is. I'll I'll tell you what made Clayton Cameron famous was he's the drummer doing the brushwork on Tony Bennett's Stepping Out With yeah. My Baby. That's how I first knew who Clayton was. Today. Yeah. 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 So uh, anyway, I I, uh, I I very much enjoyed listening to this recording. And so Beverly, thanks for sending me a copy. And uh, thanks for joining us uh, tonight. And to, to Donna, Militello, Calandra. Donna, we forgive you for missing last week but you're back. You're, back, Donna. you're back with us this week renee is here rosalyn blue is here beth ann is here and just like that it's 10 after 7 and our guest is about to be uh about to be joining us yeah i have um, never i had never uh, i don't know whether i ever actually met kathy 
but we've known each other for of each other for a long time, long, long time. And yeah, uh, I mean, you when you said, "How about Kathy?" You know, do you know Kathy? Cuz I said, "Do I know Kathy?" Sure. I mean, I used to play Kathy's music. Kathy and I uh, talked on the phone uh, quite regularly when I was at WAER, and I always enjoyed our chats and. Um, you know, I learned back when we talked when I was on the radio um, about her love of not just music, but as people will find out tonight, her love of art as well. Well, that's so, what really I thought everybody, there's so many things here of interest. And I am also a painter, but I don't paint. I need, I, I need to, to do that. But she's doing it, and it's fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, it's so we, we are, fantastic. we're excited for her to sh hopefully, you know, share um, maybe some of her artwork with us uh, tonight. By the way, your daughter just commented that she yeah, loves my I'm, shaved I'm head. To see her. Great. Hello, Cal Bell. Hey, Cal. Hope you're feeling good. It's not totally shaved, but thanks for thanks for liking it. And, it's a uh, close shave. It is a very close shave. I got, oh, wait, I got to sing my little tune. I want a clean shaven man. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> We're dancing. Did you, ever, did you ever hear the expression shave and a haircut? Dun, dun. Two bits. <laughs> yeah. What, what is it called? Shave and a haircut, two bits? Two bits. Oh, I what, are, what are bits? I think they're nickels. <laughs> I think that's what it is. All right. Anybody know? I don't know. Um, wow. So Beverly thinks Clayton uh, Cameron toured with yeah, Tony. He did. He did. He did. Yeah. He did. I worked with him several times. He's wonderful. He's yeah, and, and uh, you know, Tony is, uh, I mean, what can you say? Tony, Tony Bennett, uh, everybody knows Tony Bennett. You don't have to like jazz, but, but everybody knows the name Tony Bennett, and it's a legacy that is just unrivaled. So He has Alzheimer's now, and a lot of people are Yeah. Sad. I mean, but, you know, what a life, what a career. I mean, I'm just so happy to have had him in our lives, and we've all been alive at the same time, and... You know, and you do realize, Nance, there is a parallel to be made between Tony Bennett and our guest tonight. What? Because Tony Bennett, in his spare time, uh, uh, is a is a painter. Oh He's God, a... is he ever? Why don't we? Why don't you do us the honors and bring Kathy on? You know, I would. Uh, well, you'll have to admit her because uh, I'm not. Oh, I'm I not good enough to be that. a co-host this week. So all right. Uh, <laughs> but I got to fix that anyway. For you. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, joining us now, uh, uh, I am thrilled to, I am thrilled to welcome her in. She is the, uh, the pride and joy of Highland Park, Michigan, vocalist, artiste. Uh, uh -oh. Highland Park, Michigan, vocalist. Uh oh, you got to turn the volume down on your... Yeah, you know, I love my voice, uh, Kathy, but I don't need to hear it played back. Um, so. Hi, guys. Hi, Nance. Hi. Hi. We're waiting to see you. We want to see your. We want to see your lovely face. And yes, Renee, you're right. I there do love to are. let the guests ah! in. Oh, wow. this. <laughs> might might be the best background we've ever had. Haircut, two bits. Yeah, two aren't aren't bits nickels. Or pennies. Whatever it was, it was a long time ago. <laughs> hey, everybody, I'm having a Oh, class. wait. You, you are, wait. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm drinking a little tomato juice. Oh, Sorry. Look, at, look at how much I have, though. What a lush I am. Wait, are you drinking white wine, too, Kath? <laughs> New Zealand, Sauvignon Blanc. Oh, I'm a Sauv girl. All right. I'm a Sauv girl. This is actually, though. Hey, wow. The, the I'm drinking talking about the Van Dyke. I remember when I had gigs there too in Miami. What a great joint that was! Oh, eh? you're not kidding. You're not kidding. It was you great. Know, great sound system. Everything about it. You know who you remind me of? Who you uh -oh. look? You know my Eric played. I think Eric played a lot of my ladies of cool. Yes. Uh, yeah. Nancy resembles Ooh. Chris Connor. Oh, look at picture, look at photos of Chris. Of course, Curry. now I got to find a cat. Uh, I'm now gonna, he's going to find a picture. When I was in Atlantic City, I was at Trump, Trump Plaza, and 
No, no, no. Oh, no, I can't even say the word. So, but you can't the, go a show without dropping no, his can't, name. I can't. Ah, so, down the down the uh, boardwalk was the Playboy Hotel Casino, and Chris had a residency there. Chris so Con on my breaks, I go down and listen to Chris Connor. You know what I loved about Chris Connor? I think she was my favorite of the four women who I celebrated up for that album. Chris chose the most obscure material of all of them. And uh, she used to go to Colony Music in New York and go through and pick like unheard of things. And I recorded a couple of those. There, there, look at it. Stand. You know, I'm telling you. I know. Her hair, maybe. She's even got the hair kind of style. No. No? No. I think Nancy's more beautiful, personally, but... Oh, thank you, Eric. But Chris is... That's why we pay you the big bucks. That's right. <laughs> Checks in the mail. Yeah. Nancy, you could be her daughter. Yeah. She didn't anyway, look like that when I saw her. She... Listen, I remember my aunt, my aunt Edith used to wear her hair like that with that little curl in the front. In Tom's River, New Jersey, I played a theater. I played that show in a theater in Tom's River, and that's where she was from. And it was very surreal being in that theater knowing that she, yeah, she, I'm telling you, she was on Atlantic Records and the Erdogans uh, who were running Atlantic at the time right. let her have carte blanche at anything she wanted to record and anything she and any producer and any sidemen she wanted to use she was the only one of the four women that i covered for that album that really was a total independent and did did it on her terms and did what she wanted to do so uh do you have is there anything from that album that we could listen to eric got it eric could program it well eric no i i i unfortunately i don't I don't have it anymore because it's oh, it's sorry. <laughs> I wasn't able to take it with me from the it radio station. It's on YouTube. It is. Uh, the whole Ladies of Cool album is on YouTube. And the song that Chris Connor recorded that was the most obscure thing I ever heard. I recorded it. It's called Don't Wait Up for Me. Oh, I yeah. love the name. And yeah. it's it's film noir. It's it's total. I tell people when I perform this live, I tell people, um, everybody take a Prozac now because the song is just so, it's it's very, it's depressing, but it's it's poignant and there's something about it that's just mind blowing. You can find it on YouTube. Go to YouTube and put my name in the subject box and put don't wait up for me. And you can play that. It's I would love to play a little bit of it. We love doing that. Oh, are we going to get in trouble, though? Sometimes we get in trouble when we play things. Oh, you so, won't, won't get in trouble. No. I think we should. I so, think we, let's take the chance. All right, but uh, let me ask you a question. What year was this record recorded? This record came out in 2011. It's my concept. It's, um, I was on a bike trail, and I said, you know what? I really want to do an album. It, with my, with very modern arrangements as an homage, not a, not a tribute, but an homage to the women that, that were the prototypes of the West Coast Cool Movement. Yes, yes. They have Chris Cotter, right. Julie London, Anita O'Day, and June Christie. Mm. And I, I studied these women. I made a study of them. And I did a lot of homework and a lot of research and I found the material and I called George Clavin at Resonance Records who had been to see me at the Jazz Standard when I was there in 2006. I was at the Standard in 02 and in 06. He came and saw me there when I was there in 02 and he invited me to California to play a performing, play his concert series. Wow. And in 20. 10 when I had this in my head I called him up and I said George I have an idea and I ran this by him and I said look I've never recorded for any other label except my own I've never produced I've never had a producer I've done everything myself I hire the musicians I hire the arrangers I go to the studio I want I do everything I want to do 
I said, but this project I want to do with you, I want to partner with you because you're on the West Coast, you understand this project, and we can share in the in the in everything. And so he basically gave me carte blanche. He, I told him who I wanted to use on the record. And I told him that I wanted to take as long as it needed to be recorded. I wasn't going to, you know, just go in and cut it in one day. And he was totally fine with it. And I did the album cover. I picked the front and the back. Uh, I had, I purposefully used half of my face on the front and half of the back of me. Oh, cute. I, did you, I picked, what? I was saying to Eric, did you find that, Eric, on YouTube? Yeah, he he had a picture of it up. No, oh, oh, you, oh, try it. I, 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 you want me to? Uh, no, I, I just put up a, uh, the uh, album. No, I'll find the. Uh, no, the uh, I could find it. No, no, I got it. I, I, I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> anyway, um, it's a really the show. The whole the whole concept took me on the road for a long, long time. I played and I, I mean, pre COVID, I was playing it, um, usually with a trio, and I heard. Nancy speaking about Graham Dector. Graham Dector is on this record. Um, who else is on the record? All West Coast guys. He's amazing. Graham is just unbelievable. And oh man, God, I worked with him once. I was like, wow. It's it's Tamir's arrangements. Oh, Tamir, did Tamir play? It on it. Kevin Axt, who I still work with. The last time I worked with Kevin was a year ago now. We had a gig in Half Moon Bay at the Bach Dance and Dynamite with Kevin Mitch uh, and Dean Koba on drums. And um, anyway, Kevin Axe was on the record. Who else was on the record? I have uh, this up. I want to play a little bit of it. We'll just play yeah. a little, we'll just play just a little bit of it. Don't okay, you you got it? Don't wait up yeah, for I me. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Yep, yep, yep. I do. Okay. Yep, yep. Have a life in the heart and don't leave the door jar from now on. I'll be far from it all. Don't wait up for me. Don't be a fool like before Pretending you're not away All such childish faith is no more Don't start suspecting me Don't start trying for tea Don't be expecting me right. From now on All your foolish fears Fall on deaf and ears God, that's beautiful Oh, man that's Gilbert Castellanos playing. Who's on, who? Yeah, I was gonna say. Oh please. yeah, I know that name. Sure. Who, who did the arrangements? Tamir. 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 And who's on bass? Kevin Axt. Uh huh. Very wow. nice. Plays mm -hmm. for Tierney Sutton. Also. Right. Oh, right. she's the best band in the business. In fact, Kevin Axt and I went, and Mitch Foreman 
uh, a year ago, April, right before COVID, no, it was the spring before COVID, we went to the Blue Note in China, in Beijing. Oh. Wow. And um, I played there. It, at the Beijing Blue Note? Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. And Kevin and I, and, and Mitch Foreman and Kevin and I are recording right now. Oh. We're, um, I mean, they're sending me the files because obviously we can't be in the studio. And it's my, my new original stuff. It's my R&B stuff. Oh and my God. You and I are like mirroring each other's lives. The thing that I'm working on right now is my originals that I wrote. I wrote them years, like I was very young. And they're very R&B. They're very... Joni Mitchell, El Jero-ish. Yeah, yeah. Like that era. And what I'm doing is trying to bring them forward and work on them. And, um, you know, it's really, oh. and, uh, but, you know, I don't know. I got to pitch a couple people. We'll see if someone will put up the bread for it, you know. But I heard uh, Eric speaking before about the vaccine. My second one is this week. Oh. Which one did you get, Kathy? Moderna. Moderna. How was, how was That's your first true. one? Did it hurt your arm? No, nothing. Yeah. yeah, I had a bit of a sore arm and then I went to the gym what? the next day and I worked out. I mean, I have to tell you guys, I'm a bad girl. I This whole COVID, everything, I've not stayed home. I've had people over. I'm in my art studio right now. That's well, we're going to talk about that, yeah. yeah yes. Here, I've been out. I've been to restaurants. I go to the gym every other day. I go take a steam with a few girls in a big old place like the one in New York City, like um, it's on East 10th, the Russian Turkish bathhouse. We have a place like that in Detroit. Nothing's kept me hit. No, I haven't stayed in. I go, I'm, I'm one of the bad, but I'm lucky, I guess. Well, you don't know though, if you spread it to somebody, you don't know that. Right. No, I think I was exposed. Many times my hairdresser exposed me, but she went to the hospital and I didn't get it. I take copious amounts of supplements. I have a holistic uh, medical doctor who treated COVID patients in the parking lot because he wouldn't let them in the building. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I'm really big on all that. Uh, I was brought up on organic food. So. You know what? Listen, I called him and I told him I was getting the vaccine. So... He treated people with IV vitamin therapy and everybody survived. No one went to the hospital and no one died. So what can, he's treated viruses for years. I never had a flu shot ever, but I got this because like Eric said, he wanted to go see his mom. My mom is going to be 92 next month. Wow. You're really? lucky you got her. Wow. Yeah. yeah. He's fine. She's been out. She's in Florida. She doesn't stay home. She goes and she plays cards and to dinner and the Manny and the Petty. And so, but she did give me an ultimatum. And she said, if you want to come visit me, you got to get the shot. So I said, all right. Yeah. And, and, and my mom kind of said the same thing to me, even though my parents, they have both gotten both of their shots and they got Moderna as well, but they just would rather... I get my shots. We're all vaccinated, and then we can all kind of feel. You know what, Eric? Good. I've had people in my house. Um, yeah. You know, they come in, they wear a mask. I open a few windows, or and and at dinner. I mean, our Michigan Michigan is down in the case in the cases. They opened restaurants here at fifty percent, and I've been out. I think wow. I was out three times last week already. Were you? So, yeah. It's no big deal to me. I'm intrigued but, about this. I'm intrigued about this bathhouse in, in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> but that's another story for another time. Is that hey, the one? Uh, is that the one that Bette Midler sang in? No, no. This is the What's that whole bathhouse story with her. Bette Midler sang in a bathhouse. That, oh. Yes, man. That's how she got. You got to get your gaze, man. You got to collect your gaze. She started. That's how she started in the bathhouse. Got to collect your gaze. That's the deal. That was a bathhouse. The Russian Turkish bathhouse is on East 10th between First Ave and Avenue A. Oh. And, the, and they also have another property in Miami Beach. And the one I go to in Michigan, in Detroit, is called 
the Schwitz. <laughs> I it, love it. It takes up a whole two city blocks. So I've been there since June, since they reopened. Every two weeks I go with six or seven women and we, we're not on top of each other. And we are in a 200 degree sauna. And then we jump in a cold plunge that's about 48 degrees. That's it. The closest I can get to that is my shower. That's about <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so, you know, talk, talking COVID vaccines, hopefully turning the corner. The, this We're coming up basically on the one-year anniversary. I mean, th for me, it's this coming Friday. I think for a lot of people, this Friday... Coming up the 12th is the last social gathering that I was a part of to hear live music. So we're so what for someone like yourself who who lives for performing and you've performed obviously all over the world. Uh, you just talked about in China. Um, and I, mean, the, I know I know and the Blue Note Jazz Cruise right. a couple months prior to that. What did I do? Uh, I yeah. I rescheduled a few gigs. Actually, I had gigs during COVID. I played a four night a nighter at the same woman that owns the Detroit Festival Jazz Fest and Mac App. She owns oh Gretchen Gretchen Gretchen's yeah. Club. Yeah. They're still doing music. They never stopped this whole time. There's plexiglass between the band and the audience, and instead of 150 people, 75. And Gretchen, wow. Gretchen sits at the bar, no mask, 95, 94 years old, and drinks her wine. And you talk about the dirty dog. Kef. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the dirty dog. The yeah. dirty dog. I was there in October. I'll be for four nights. I'll be back in June. Um, I did a couple of private parties over the summer outdoors. Okay. So people wanted to have like 30, 40 people in their yard and they needed some music. And so I did that. So what I did during this time, I did three things. I wrote a lot of music. Do you play, I, what instrument do you play? I don't. So you I write the lyrics and the melody or what do you? Yes, yes. And I wrote and, and the tracks were done in LA and sent to me and I went in the studio here and I cut my vocals to the tracks cut. I mean, there were music files. Now was this, so when you first started recording, you were more uh, on the um, straight ahead jazz side, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? And so at what point did you decide to kind of cross over? You've crossed over into an R&B thing now. Right, I never crossed over. I was an R&B writer and vocalist in the late 70s, all through the 80s, and then right around 92, 93, I started teaming up with co-writers in LA and New York that were jazz writers, and they did both, that were jazz and, and for example, Jeff Franzel, one of my longest, dearest friends, co-writers, was writing for Celine Dion and Taylor Dane, and we wrote an entire. Oh my God! Wow. We wrote my first jazz album. We co-wrote the whole thing, and it's all originals, and it's called All in a Dream's Work, and it yeah. came out in '95 on a yeah. little boutique label in Ann Arbor, Michigan, called School Kids. Well, I remember. I remember it. <laughs> Bergman and Steve Bergman and I. This whole summer went on 20 and 25 mile bike rides. We're still friends. Um, wow. And so the second album, Mood Swings, the third album, Vintage, which was on Warner Brothers Lightyear, the fourth album, To the Ladies of Cool, and the fifth album was called The Space Between. And that's right around the time when I circled back to my R&B roots, which, which is where I started. And then I recorded Uncovered Soul and Kamau Kenyatta and I co-produced it and I cut it in LA with Kevin Axt 
Mitch Foreman, Eric Harland on drums, um, Manyango <laughs> Jackson played <clears throat> percussion. Um, um, I had a couple different guitar people come in on some tracks and and one tune I had a trumpet on and I just and and actually every one of the most of the songs on that album including my originals were all recut from the ground up as reimaginations of these songs and we took them a step further we took them more into the soul is there, is there something we could we could play oh, Yes. What would you uh, like us to play? To sh you, you did a you did some you did some makeovers, okay. right? Yeah, I, I redid a couple of these. Um, go to YouTube. I'm go on there. I'm on it too. Maybe I'll we'll see who can find it first. All right. First, play like maybe fifty bars of the original of Uncovered Soul. And then go find with my uncovered soul, and you will hear how I recut it from the ground up. And that will give you an idea of what I've been up to. Oh, like the do the original one first. Play the play. Okay. Yeah. I play. like this idea. I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, so I have uh I you don't have it, see it. I don't see and it. again. Who, who uh, did it originally, Kath? Uncovered. I, who? I wrote it with Jeff Franzel, the same guy that I've been writing with all these years since since the late eighties. So I don't. I, I'm a little lost as to what to play. Play um, Uncovered Soul. Don't play my live version when in London. That's a live version. You can play that, but just play it from the record. Play it from the album. I think I have it. Um, yeah, but when you share things, I can't see anything because you only have one <laughs> monitor. Well, this is the album cut. Love the mix. Love the mix you're using. Yeah. I'm talking about your voice. So dark and cold. That's what I need to know. That's why I take it slow. And that's what I need to show to you. What do you see? This is inspiring to me. I, I'm. I, it just inspires me to keep moving forward with my. Um, yeah. My little projects that I'm working on. Okay, so now. Great. Now, Google, YouTube, with my uncovered soul, with my uncovered soul. It's a completely different take. It's a reimagination. I cut it from the ground up. It's not this version. It's called oh. With My Uncovered Soul. I did it here in Detroit with all Detroit guys. Somebody mastered this baby, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. So love, love it. Every song on the album has been, um, almost every song has been reimagined. And my latest single, the record label I'm on said, no more albums. We're doing singles. Yeah, singles. that's what I'm going to do. And it, it's a lot easier. It's one song at a time. I want you guys to play a taste of my latest single, which crossed 
multi genres, and it really, really, it really topped the charts, all of them. It's called Fancy Free. It's a Donald Burke song, Nancy. Oh. With, li- with lyrics by my co-writer, one of my co-writers, Paul Randolph. And it's a duet with, um, with uh, Hubert Laws. I, yeah, I thought so. Because when I Googled C- Kathy Cousins, one of the things that came up was Kathy and Hubert Laws, Fancy Free. That's it. And I did the artwork. But we're going to talk about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's just so uh, retro. I love it. But with the flute, the people are so It's a bunch of things. Love it. Oh man. Well, my bass player uh, is Paul Randolph. And Paul Randolph plays all over the world. And he, he's with a guy, he's with a band out of the UK, no, out of Berlin called Jazzanova. Yeah, I remember great name. I remember playing a Paul Randolph CD at the station. And Paul oh. and and hold on. And Paul and I wrote the song that was a hit in the UK and in Europe, and you should play a, t- a piece of it. Um, it's called Could You Be Me? Well, guess what? There's about 10 remixes. Uh, all these British guys did a remix, and all these different guys did a remix, but the one you want is the Giles Peterson. It's got a blue cover. Eric, I swear you should pay. You should play a taste of it because it is so out. Well, so out I'd be playing this on the radio if I was still working in the radio. You know. <laughs> uh, all right. So the blue cover. The blue cover. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It says, "Could you be me?" Uh, if I could see the cover, <laughs> I could. I got I could. it. Here it is. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, Nancy, check it out. Check it out the by the Detroit sound, man. Yeah. Oh, you really are. Um, Paul and I co-wrote that. And it it gets when it gets to the chorus, it completely changes. I mean, the time signature changes. The whole thing changes. And that was cut in Detroit, yes. Yeah. And then and the other song I did with him, there's one other song, if you have time to pull it up, it's called Put the Voodoo on Me. Yeah, I saw that right on the uh, your website. Uh, best R and B performance. It almost got to the Grammy. Oh, it, it almost got nominated. Um, and you have a label that's executive a producer uh, doing all this stuff for you. You know what? I'm basically doing all the stuff, but the guy that runs the label and I have been a team since I want to say 93, 94. And, you know, everything is, it's like a partnership. But Eric asked me, what did I do with all these canceled gigs? 
Some yeah. of them, some of, most of them were canceled. A few weren't. Some of them got rescheduled for this year for outdoors, uh, a couple of jazz festivals. And I spent my time creating this art space. Um, I built an art studio with lighting and I, I, I made a multi-purpose space. It's a gallery, it's a studio, it's a, I can do voice lessons here for some of my kids, my students. Um, I could take all the, everything out of here. And I mean, it's about 30 feet long by 12 wide. I could do a house concert here one day when people can come in. I have an art clinic that I teach that Nancy would love called Improvisation on Canvas. Well, I wanted to get around to talking about this because one of the, the, the things I was excited about having you on, um, I, I actually had a, a, a scholarship to college for art. I, I, I oh. painted all, I've painted all my life and um, I quit. I kind of quit. I got, I don't ask. I don't know. It, it just, I just don't do it anymore. I, so I'm very drawn to your work. I'm very drawn to what inspires your work. You're, you have one of your pieces behind you here. It's very. Um, this, this is four foot square and it's called Motor City Madness. And I don't think the colors are translating good um, in whoever's tuned in. I will I flip the view so you can see some stuff on the other, on the opposite wall. Oh. Please. Um, my entire premise is titled jazz in the abstract. And most of these creations are painted to, today I was painting to Lyle Mays. You know, it's all jazz based. Um, most of it is anyway. It, 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 yeah, it's inspired. So I wanted to tell you, I ha I've spoken with many musicians who, when they create music, see colors. You are it's, not the first person. I do on. not see colors. Hold, but you hold on, Nancy. It's what, it's the condition I have. It's called synesthesia. Hmm. Synesthesia. It's a condition when I sing, I see colors. When I paint, I hear colors. Ah. Yeah have a clinic that I created for students and I've taught this everywhere from the Hartford School of Performing Arts to the New World School in Miami to many many colleges universities high schools improvisation on canvas wow. and it's an improv on canvas where I guide the students into hearing color and seeing sound based on the music that I bring in and I play Monk, Miles, uh, Bud Powell, Charlie Parker, Coltrane. Sometimes I get really wild and I'll bring in stuff like the Art Ensemble of Chicago or Rashan Roland Kirk or, in, or Archie Shep, some really wild stuff. And these students are blowing a solo on a canvas. Mm. They're improvising on canvas or if it's watercolors, watercolor paper, and they're and they're, I'm, I'm, I'm showing them basically, I'm, I'm not showing them, but I'm guiding them into hearing color based on the music played wow. or seeing sound. And these kids, they come up with amazing art, art pieces. And at the New World in Miami, one class I taught there, those artists, the, all the students' work is hanging in the, on the walls today. When I went to Edmonds College uh, in Edmonds, Washington, and I worked with a vocal jazz group and I worked with the jazz ensemble, the big band, they said, here, and they took a, a five foot square acoustic tile out of the band room and they handed it to me. They said, go paint this. And I did, I did. I had a, you know, a few hours before, the, before we had a, a rehearsal and a concert. And I painted it and guess where it is now? And they put it back on the wall in the band room. So, um, you know, it's it's become a second career. It devolved into a second career for me. And and, and your painting really is, is, is simply an extension of your 
performances. Totally. It feeds, one art form feeds into the other. There's no separation. Mm -hmm. I'm inspired, uh, you know, I can look at a painting and write a song based on what I've painted. I, what I'd love to do, Eric and Nancy, is flip around the iPad and show you what's on the opposite wall. So you can oh, see. sure. Well, you'd okay. love that. First of all, see if you can see what's on this wall or if I have to raise the iPad. No. Yeah, we see it. We I see love, it. I, I just love the blue and brown one. Yeah, the, <laughs> one the red one is called Sangria. And the, the blue the blue palette is called Queen of the Castle. That's hey, mine. I and, want that one. I'm the queen of the castle. She is the queen of her castle. <laughs> I'm going to take these off the wall and I'm going to do a little show and tell. These are three foot squares. The ones on the side. Hold on. I'll be right there. It's okay. Oh, it's fine. I have a good one for Nancy. Monkey Squeaker, we all saw you scratching on your scratcher. <laughs> Nancy, this one here is an homage to Thelonious Monk. Oh, this oh. I want to see. The, Thelonious, the nut, the crazy man. <laughs> it's called Genius of Thelonious. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the first paintings I ever did, 1997. Let me see if I can. Ah, make... you just inspire me. I would love to get. I have a dear friend, Peter Mack, and he plays great bass and he also paints. Of course, he has a beautiful art studio, which I don't have. But God, I think I think I could do this. Something like this. Oh, you're, yeah. You're just so inspirational, Kath. What is called. This is a new one. This is called Box of Secrets. Can you see that okay? Box of Secrets. Yes. God, you're so creative. Your 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 names, like the way that you oh my gosh. Yeah. I I mean, here, hold on. <laughs> oh, that's all right. We're enjoying I, it. Don't worry. No, no, I mean, we're all enjoying it. When Kathy first told me about this passion of hers, when we talked on the phone going back to the 90s, maybe around the time when that Monk uh, piece was done. I mean, it, it just fascinated me to no end. And now to see, uh, you know, to see all these works come to uh, have, fruition, it's just- Unbelievable. Kathy, Kathy, I have a question for you. Okay. While you're searching. There's, a, there's an artist that I love and she does a lot of kind of abstract St jazz stuff and her name is deborah heard have you ever heard of her oh i never heard of deborah heard oh, all right so you go look up deborah heard when you get off of here you'll 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 look this you'll watch this again and then you can look her name up i i um can i love her that? but i love i love your i just love this work you don't know how stirring this is for this me this one is called meet me in mumbai meet oh. me in mumbai because there's a lot of orange in this painting and, and pink and i thought about the women in india yes uh, with, with their fabulous um yeah uh, you know what they wear that's just terrific it's just it's an, it's it's uh, and you know i can see how uh, you, you said something to me and i already thought of this to be perfectly honest if i was an interior decorator i would commission you to paint something to match my um oh that's brilliant. Well, so funny you said that, Nancy, as I take this big one off the wall. I'm putting another one up here. You um, read my mind, Nancy. I was thinking along oh, those no, lines. She could totally she like, could. rock, you know. And oh, do and do it justice. Me. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, can you guys still hear me while I'm Oh, yeah, we're fine. Yeah, we're, we're good. Fine. We hear you fine. Okay. I feel um, like we're in a museum. Yeah. Um, I do a lot of commissioned pieces. And I am working with a few designers right now, actually. I'm going to turn this around, okay? I'm going to sneak by you. Tell me if you can see what's on this wall. Can you see a big black and white? Yes, painting? yes. Yes. Um, 
everybody that's commissioned me in the last couple of months, Look with the that. exception of a couple of people, they want these black and white uh, with a little bit of blue. So what I've done is I'm going to turn you now to the far end of my studio. Can you see this? I, I don't know how to do this without losing my <laughs> So, Kath, how long have you had? How long since you built this studio? Uh, can you see this big black and white one? This yeah. is yeah. four feet long yeah. by three feet high. And it's called Bitches Brew after Miles Davis. Yeah, baby. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take that one down and put the brand new black and white one. What right a creative mind. Oh, my God. Right now. I'm not going to do too much more, but. Yes. No, this is this is we knew this was going to be a, a part of the show. I mean, people in the chat right now are just absolutely um, so thrilled uh, about this. We was, we've never we've never had a guest who's been able to not only talk about her love of music, but also show how her love of music has translated uh, into uh, into her artwork. Look at this. Oh, so here's. So here's the brand new one, okay? I just finished this thing. I don't know, should I move back? I can't No, you're see. good. What's no. your medium, acrylic? Yeah. yeah, yes, acrylic on canvas. And this black and white piece, it, I was, all right, you wanna know what I was I can see to? the hint of blue in there. And of course, gray being one of my favorite colors and black right being my here. other. Right here. Yeah, yeah, you see it? I see oh. it. Now, why yeah. can't I see the hint? I can I, now. I can't see a hint of blue, but right here. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, okay. I will see. I was there's so much to process. I wasn't looking there. Yes. I but no. Blue, I see it. Blue, gray, and blue, gray, green are some of the most soothing colors. Let me tell you what I was listening to when I painted this. Mm. Um, I was in a uh, every Thursday night. I in since even since COVID. I go with a mask on. There's a group of artists that paint, not in my studio, but in a in a big industrial building uh, downtown Detroit. And we we hook up and we paint. Um, and it's these are a couple of people are full time artists, and a couple of people are corporate by day and art people by night. And I had earbuds in. And I was listening to Keith Jarrett's solo concert at Carnegie Hall. Oh, boy. Ah, wow. I, you, what a I, canvas I, that is to work off of. <laughs> well, what I was listening to, number eight, because everything Jarrett did in those solo concerts were improvisations. Right. When right. he sat down, he never knew what he was going to play. Right. And uh, anyway, there's the black and white one there. And then over here... I have a pair of green little guys. These are, I call these my, my little guys, see? These are 12 inch square canvases. And here's um, something in the, in the brightly colored palette. So, I mean, I'm all over the ballpark when I do these. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk this back. I think. Catherine, what time of day do you do these? When you do this stuff, oh, yeah. what what time do you just paint? What time of day? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Sometimes it's night. Sometimes it's day. Sometimes it's if I can't sleep, I'll come down here and start working. Anyway. Oh my god, I, I love that you do that. <laughs> I can't get out of. I can't. They always tell you get out of bed, you go do something. It's like ugh, I just want. <laughs> But the thing is, in all honesty, this has become a second career, and um, I'm I'm getting a lot of commissions, and I've been selling. I I post these things, and people people wanna they wanna buy them. Um, Where do you post them? Just on your because I saw all your work on Facebook, Instagram. Instagram, uh, okay. Yeah. I'm in a I'm in a couple of galleries right now. Um, I'm in a show in Laguna Beach, California. Uh, I just took the one that Nancy liked, that blue one, that pale. Oh God, one. I love that. Uh, I just took that 
off off of the wall. Actually, Nancy, <laughs> Nancy, I forgot. To you guys, this is this is a small wall. Let, tell me if you can. I'm going to actually hold the iPad, hold this up. Tell me if you can. This Take wall. us on a little tour. Ah! Look at this. Can you see that? Sure. There's okay. someone in my life who thinks can they paint. <laughs> How can I say? <laughs> How can I say? <laughs> it's a room in the back that I didn't take you through. And that's where all of my paintings are stored, the ones that are up in this room. And, but this is, I, and the one over here, this big one, this, this is a four foot. Let's no, we see look. it. We see it. So has this become sort of your uh, career? Are you is, kidding? Has it become your main focus now? Has, has the weight shifted art and music next? No. And I paint from the stage also. I paint when I'm on stage. I let the band blow wow. uh, a tune. And, it, and I come up with like a, an improvisational, usually in three to five minutes. But wow. those are those are small. They're the largest would be 20 inch, 12 inch to 20 inch. This blue one sold. It's four foot square and it, it sold to a couple in a house. They already have two paintings, big ones, and they redid a room and they wanted a, a big. I told, yeah. 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 And I get good money for them in the galleries. You know, the galleries, they take 40, 50 percent. So if people are buying direct from me, I can cut the cost a little bit. So a painting like this, a four foot square from me is a $2,000 event. Uh, if you're buying that size in a gallery, I got to make 2000. So I have to up the price. It's, it's a tricky business. It's very, yeah. tr very tricky. I want to, I just want to read a quote of yours that I, I think it's just so it just. Of mine. Sums up it, it sums up your, your, um, uh, it sums up your thought process so beautifully. Uh, um, you said, I never have an idea or color scheme in mind. When I pick up a brush, I, I paint strictly from my intuition. And you say that the hardest part is acknowledging when a piece is done. I can Ooh, imagine. That, like, yes, yes, yes. Like, like it's like when, over singing. Right? Yeah. Like, it's got to yeah. be tough to know, like, okay, like, I mean, when is... When, when did I turn into the Christine Aguilera of art? <laughs> I mean, there's a starting point, but it's like, how do you know when you have come to the conclusion of your work? It's. it's I don't know. And sometimes yeah. I just have to walk away. Yeah. You know, I, what I'll do is when it's like 95% there, I'll walk away. And I'll, and I'll give my eyes a rest and I'll come right. back right half hour, hour later and I'll look at it and I'll say, it's done. Yeah. Or I'll look at it and I'll say, there's something not right about a certain section in that painting. It needs more depth. I need to blot something out. But it's no, intuitive. But you're the only one that knows that. And no one cares. You know what I mean? That's the whole thing that I teach with music. No, the people listening, they, they really don't know. They feel you. That's it. They feel you. You know, they don't really hear you. So the whole thing with with your paintings and what I love, and this is something else I, I teach because of all my spiritual studies, is when you involve ego, you 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 stop the connection between you and spirit. And when you're making this stream of consciousness, a direct connection to, to the creative source. And it is a stream of consciousness. And it, it's like I'm not even, it's an out of body experience. Of course it is. You're in the room with God, my dear. <laughs> it's, the same thing. it's the same thing when I'm on stage. You know, you have to be present because you have to have, um, you have to, you know, <laughs> you have a band there. So you have to make sure everything's on key and track. But when I'm singing and they're not, and they're, and they're comping and they're playing behind me, it can be an out of body experience like that oh. song, like that Chris Conner tune. Yeah. yeah. No, I go completely away. I don't even look at them sometimes. I go completely away. I, in fact, sometimes after a ballad, I have to stop and gather myself because I cannot speak after that. 
it's it's I'm so scattered all over in the zone. So hey, you guys, did anybody pipe in? Did anybody comment? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we got I was lots just, of comments. I mean, it's it's hard. To I was just going to point out something that Rosalind Blue said earlier, Nance. Um, that I think that Blue. Rosalind is is uh, is a devoted viewer of our show. She has been watching our show since the beginning, um, and is is a uh, she's actually a therapeutic art teacher. Wow! And so she said earlier. Um, this might have even been before you started showing us uh, a lot of the works in your studio. She said, as a therapeutic art teacher, one of the exercises she has her students do is paint to music. Her favorite music to employ is classical. But she says it's, very, it's a very interesting art activity, and she finds it to be very successful uh, with the students. So, Well, besides uh, classical, everything I do... I do not listen to vocals when I'm painting or teaching painting. Oh. It's all instrumental. Okay. So what's your what's what's your thinking behind that? Well, the vo the voice will be a distraction. I was yeah, I was thinking that. It's a distraction. Yeah. So I you know and although I tell you I did it in Palm Desert High School. Is it I wait? I need to interrupt. Is it a distraction because you want to listen to the voice? For me, it is. Yeah. Either I don't like it or I hear yeah. it. I'm so with you. <laughs> I'm so, so with you. I yeah. would much rather listen to, <laughs> I had a, kid, a group of high schoolers that wanted Jimi Hendrix, but Jimi Hendrix was not offensive. And if, I thought it was a brilliant suggestion. So we, we painted a Jimi Hendrix, but we've done classical. I've, I've done some classical, but but almost like, like interesting classical, like Scriabin, or oh. you know, or or Holst, you know, the guy that did the Planet, yeah. like that mm -hmm. kind of classical stuff that was edgy, very edgy for its day. Or Let me ask, I want to ask you a question. I want to get back to something because it's it's circling in my head, and I have to ask you: What is your background in music? I what have no background. I never studied. You, you, you never studied voice or an instrument or because that's inspirational for some people to hear and to see how I'll say this though. I've taught at over 200 colleges and universities as a guest artist, and I've worked with vocal jazz ensembles. I've worked with musical theater kids. I've worked with I wish um, I had your energy that way. Oh my I, god. I would be out there doing it today if it wasn't for this. Yeah. Um, I um Oh yes, musical theater, even the legit singers, even the classical singers. I, I did, I've done jazz improv with those kids. And what was the question, Nancy? Cause I had an answer. I asked what your musical background was, what your education was. No education, high school. I graduated high school. I never, I went to a two year college and I didn't study anything. No music, no nothing. But. I started doing radio and TV commercials in the late, in the early eighties, national, national car commercials, national stuff. You mean and as a, as a, as a on-screen model? No, singing. Or voiceover? Singing. Singing. Dodge boys have- Oh, you could model, you're lovely. Imagine yourself in a Mercury now, those commercials. Wow. Little, all national, mostly car. In fact, there was a Cadillac commercial. I went, Ooh. four notes, four notes, $200,000, four notes. Every well, single no wonder you can afford to paint. <laughs> that was in um... <laughs> $200,000. Gripe, I can live the rest of my life on that. <laughs> 90, 1991. It was close to that. It was, I'm, I'm sag after. So, the checks came in every every six weeks. They reran that commercial for the, that was over like a two and a half year period. That wasn't immediately. Every time they reran this a different commercial and they used the music that I sang on, the money the checks would come in, and I did a lot of stuff like that. Vocalese, very Enya, very Enya stuff. The producers wanted 
very ethereal music for some of the for some of these and then some of them were like you know top 40 rock and roll tunes right and so tell me how do these people find out about you i found out about them i'll give you a perfect example i wanted to be a jingle singer because i knew i could sing and i knew there was money in that so i got on a plane and i flew to chicago from detroit and I pounded the pavement. Literally, I walked. I walked for miles and miles and miles. And I had a phone book. There was no computers. There was nothing back then. I had a yellow pages. And I went to every music producer I could find, Jingle Company, hmm. and knocked on doors, physically knocked on doors with my cassette tapes of me doing made up commercials with the backing tracks. And I got work. I did a Hoover commercial. I did, I did this in Chicago and in Cleveland and in Detroit. And, and I started getting a lot of work. So you, you don't have to tell us. You, 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 you did this all your life. So you didn't have a family in the meantime? I had no kids, no husband, no kids. And I never wanted it. I just wanted my career in music, my career in painting didn't really start until the last five, six, seven years. I yeah, think for, for, for my student, and I have some students watching right now, and, and I think that your story is immensely inspirational because you are a great example of, yes, I can. Don't oh. tell me I can't because yes, I can. And nothing, st nothing stops you. You just decide this is what I'm going to do and I'll go do it. You know, and that's, it's just so inspirational for. No, for it was always like, I wake up, one foot goes in front of the other. I never knew from one day to the next, if a door would open or if a door would close. And if one door closed, another door would open. And I met a lot of people along the way. And I'm a people person which is part of why I never See, isolate. That's, that's what's tough for me because I'm an introvert and I just assume, I just assume, I love the idea of people. I just don't want to be around them. <laughs> that's the truth. Oh. I'm not... Eric, Eric, have you gone out at all in this COVID thing, climate? Have I have not seen the light of day since March of last year. No, I, I, no, I mean, I've been out, but I have not been, um, I have if not been to- If you could go out, where would you go? How about that? If you, if you, if everything tomorrow was over, like, where would you go? Where would I, I go? I have a I've, feeling you're not much different than I, and I don't think there's really nowhere you'd go unless somebody paid us. <laughs> I just want to see live music again. I mean, I, I, I <laughs> uh, but honestly, I mean, no, I, I have not, uh, I've lived a very, uh, yeah, I've, I've lived a very uh, introverted life over the last year. And I'm the type of person who loves to be out. I want to be on a stage. It was, it was hard for me last summer, not, not being able to go to a, a summer festival or, or go to all the different summer music events that we have here in, in central New York. So uh, again, not that I've, I've, I've barricaded myself in my apartment, but I've, I've, I've played it safe put it that way but i know yeah. that that the time is going to come when i'm going to be able to go out and enjoy the things that i i used to enjoy we're just not you know we're not quite there well yet. we're you know what i've already been on a plane in in all of this so and i'm probably going in fact i already have a couple of flights booked i'm going to florida first and then i'm going to los angeles second so uh, you know what? Nothing really kept me inside. The first couple months, March, from March, I was, I had dinner out the last night before the lockdown. I had dinner out on the, I think it was the 16th of March or the 13th of March. And the next day, everything closed. Yeah. So I was in for the rest of that month and for most of April. And but my gym reopened in September and I immediately went back and the Schwitz reopened in June and I immediately went back and I got in the car and I went and I drove uh, across the state and up north and to Chicago and I visited 
some people and I stayed in a hotel and I stayed in somebody's house and I had no problems, nothing. And by no the way, Nancy, just so you know, uh, Kathy has been known to schmooze with some of the biggest names Woo! in jazz. Check that out. Yeah, baby. That was at the Jazz <laughs> Education. Jen? Or maybe it was IAJE. I don't know. Can you see Herbie's? It looks like. I, I can't really I see. I can't Herbie. tell. It, it looks like Jen. I don't know. It was, it was probably at some jazz convention, but uh, but it was cool. It's nice. I saw that picture. I said, I got to include it in the show. We love your auburn hair, by the way. I have two gingers in my life, my daughter and my grandson. You know what? Um, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you the best story. I was looking for something in a drawer. A couple <laughs> of ago. I was looking for a document and I opened this folder and guess what I found? A letter that was written to me but from Chick Corea on his stationery. Oh, I saw that on Facebook. Mind blowing. And, and I'm going to have it framed. But guess what else I found in that same drawer? A letter from George Duke. Oh. So I'm going to have them both framed. Yeah, it was just, it was so strange that he passed away. So strange. I wanted to ask you too, Kathleen. I remember when we first, when we were chatting on a fairly regular basis, somebody, someone whose name came up quite a bit. And I know you had a friendship with him and work with him. And sadly, he is no longer with us. And I'm just curious if maybe you could Kevin? talk about you. Yeah, you knew you knew where I was going. Kevin, Kevin Mahogany. Yeah. Oh, we love Kevin. Anybody that's ever met Kevin. Oh, he is just was a deer. He's passed. Right. I believe yeah, Kevin died. Um, sadly, I think it was November of 2017. Yeah. 2018. Um, I was work? on the road with him. Yeah. I, yes. I went on the road with him. Um, 2006, seven, eight and nine. And it was Red Holloway who also passed. Um, who was amazing. Red mm. was great. I mean, being on the road with those guys were just, it was Bernard um, Purdy on- Sounds Jones. like so. Oh, I know Bernard. I, I know Bernard Purdy. Yeah, it was um, Bernard Purdy. It was Red Holloway. Sometimes it was Cyrus Chestnut. And sometimes it was um, not Terrence Blanchard, was it Terrence? No, it wasn't. Was it Terrence? We played Europe. We did Switzerland and Spain, and um, we did the Lyon. We did the we did Lyon. We did that jazz festival. We opened for Seal on that gig. Huh. We played. We played a bunch of dates at. Birdland and at the Jazz Standard here, we played a bunch of jazz festivals around the country, including Oceanside or Ocean City, California, not far from San Diego. And what year was all this? It started in around 2006 and it ended in 2009. And we were supposed to go to Greece. We were supposed to go on more gigs. And oh my God! And who was? And you were booking all that, or you had somebody helping you book it? No, another person was booking that. And um, no, I was a feature in the band. Kevin was the lead vocalist. I came out and did three or four tunes, and I did all this nice band. Gig. What? Nice gig. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. And, um, Kevin had a stroke. Right. He had a Series of strokes, so a whole lot of work got canceled, and the, and Kevin got better, but he didn't want to do that kind of music anymore because it was heavy. I mean, it was it was almost like R and B stuff, R and B and heavy blues, and Kevin didn't really want to do it anymore. So, but he is such a blues based singer. But what what do you think he would prefer to have done? Blues and jazz, but this was this was the music. A big Joe Turner. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And so there was a lot of shake, rattle, and roll stuff. And I don't think Kevin 
really liked it, but the money was great. I mean, I'm sure he liked that part. Um, and we, I mean, the crowds, the audiences went nuts over this stuff. I've so, always had a hard time uh, doing things for money with when it when it when it involves music. Like I, I always want. I just have a hard time like going. Oh, that'll pay a lot of money. Yeah, I'll dress up in an orange suit or or I'll be a an uh, I'll be a funk singer for a night or I'll be a. I just I. It's like I just stay on my lane for some reason. You know what? I'm a chameleon and I I like doing it for the money, but I also like doing a lot of different kinds of stuff. So I can be an R&B singer one night and a straight ahead jazz singer the next night, not even in, both in the same night. In fact, the last bunch of dates that I had, Nancy, I combined the music. I did a smorgasbord of what I do. And I just did some from this album and some stuff from that and album. And you know what, you know what, Kathy, the thing is all jazz people from our generation that love jazz, they love R&B. They love funk. They love the blues. Hey, now, I'm going to argue that. I don't know if Mark Murphy did. I don't know if Mark Murphy or... Yeah, but he's not from... He's from another generation before us. Okay, he's... well, I have to really look at that hard and see if there are people... I think there are. I think, like... People like Rosanna Vitro and people like, I think you, you probably right. You're probably right. The big, the boomer. Well, it's the age group. We grew up with, with earth, wind and fire and, yeah. you know, and all that stuff. We, and that's a part, it's in our blood. It's in our blood. I'm an old rock and I started out in rock and roll. Oh, did um, the jazz girl. And she's amazing from, um, Washington, Seattle. Who am I thinking of? Greta. Greta Matassa. Yeah. Greta, Greta, Greta Matassa. Greta started in a rock band. And, um, you know, a lot of people did. I mean, I started singing in top 40 in R&B bands. That's how I started. Yeah. And I was going to just, I know we're, we're coming towards the the, the end of the show and I just was hoping that maybe you could uh, touch on your uh, association uh, back in the, the 80s with uh, the great Don was and I just worked with Don a year and a half ago um, Don well actually he hosted the Blue Note Jazz Cruise and I was an artist on that for the week on that cruise Don and I go back to high school although wow. he, went, he went to Oak Park High I went to Southfield High, and Don's a couple of years older than me, but we knew each other back then. Boy, yeah. that sure helps. Yeah. And when Don started the band, Was Not Was, sure. here we go, Nancy. I knocked on the door of the studio, and I said, I want to do background vocals on this. On this, I know you're doing stuff in here, Don. And I was there on the right day, in the right place, at the right time. And he contracted me. He said, why don't you hire two other background singers and we'll have the three of you. So that was my first was not was project. And then from there, other people got involved and Don- uh, Tell our listeners who, who this gentleman is. They may not know, yeah, we all know who he is. There's a picture they, of Don. They may not know who he is. Don, today, Don is the president of Blue Note Records. But back in the day, you know, we grew up in, in neighborhoods three miles from each from each other. We grew up down the road a piece. And Don, you know, he he was a master producer. I mean, he's produced Bonnie Raitt, the Rolling Stones, the B-52s. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he on the on Blue Note Records, Candace Springs, Jesse James, um, all sorts of people. I mean, the Black Crows. Don is is a producer's producer, and what's great about Don is he lets his musicians, he lets the artists, pretty much bring everything they want to the table. What Don does is he's like the master chef. He knows just how much salt, just how much seasoning, just yeah, how yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Don, and he's he's an amazing. He and he also. 
I mean, when I knew Don back in the day, he was playing upright bass for this female jazz pianist mm. named Laura Paxton. And listen, I mean, yeah. Don, there's a lot, there's a there's a lot of history there with Don sure. and sure. me and a lot of stories. And, and it's, so, it's such a blessing that you're in such a big uh, city like Detroit where all, all these things are happening. And Detroit is happening now and there's tons of studios here and I'm getting called now again for background vocals for this rock and roll artist and that R&B singer and, you know, and things, you know, co Eric's right, COVID is, it, it'll be here for a bit, but People in, in Michigan are being vaccinated right and left, and things are opening up here. I hope it does. I really hope it does. I think it's going to. I think by the end of the summer, we will, if not be at herd immunity, be very close to it, because now, and, and I think things by the end of this year, I think things will be open again. And I think by the beginning of 2022, I just I would love to go do that European tour that we were setting up before this all happened. I really would. I have a following in London and I'd like to go back. And I was supposed to be there this past summer and it didn't happen. So mm. it will happen again. It will. It, it will happen probably in the beginning of next year. Where do you play when you go there? Uh, I play the I I play a, a series of clubs. Ronnie Scott's or Pizza on the Park or? Oh, uh, like the Pheasantry, like those kind of places. And maybe and, and maybe there'll be some festival things for, for me. But I record in London. I was on the BBC. I was on Jazz FM in their studio. And I mean, I have a phenomenal promotion man there who ran me around to all these different radio platforms and a lot of things are happening. A lot of things will pick up. Oh my God, it's so exciting! <laughs> and I read in an interview. You know, you know how I like to do my research and look back at like some old interviews with the guests we're gonna have. And I, I read in an interview that you did. I, I don't know how many years ago it was, but somebody had asked you, Kath, um, if you could take a trip in a time machine, where would you want to go, and who would you want to meet, and I don't know if you, I don't know if you remember the answer you gave, but was that you talking to me? No, no, this was a print interview, but I'll, I just loved your answer. Your answer was that you would love to go back to 1967 and to Woodstock and hang out with Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Laura Nero, and then you'd want the time machine to forward you to the 70s and hang out with Curtis Mayfield. And Ronald Isley. I just love who that answer. Interview? Who did the interview? I need well, to see. Who, who did the interview? It was uh, it was Jazz Blues News. I would love to see that interview. I would love a copy of that. <laughs> I'll send you. I'll send you, you a copy. Were, you didn't go to Woodstock. Woodstock. I wanted to go. I <laughs> was there. You were there, weren't I you? Was but I hated it because because it was so muddy, and so I made the people I was with leave because I don't like getting my feet muddy. <laughs> but I did see the sun coming up behind Jimi Hendrix's head as he was playing "Star Spangled Banner." It mind blowing. What were you smoking that day? <laughs> you know, I have never been a big smoker. I think we, you know, we we did we did a lot of other things. Mushrooms, hey, mushrooms, oh. man! Oh gosh! Oh boy! <laughs> it was it was the era, Eric. I mean, you know, I always no, say, I, I'm not denying it. I'm sure there are people in the chat that know some things oh, about no, it. It just was the and era. Please, wait a minute, Eric. I've done thousands of interviews, and I I don't even remember that publication. What was it called? Jazz, blues, and news? It was called, uh, yes, jazzbluesnews.com. Uh, and uh, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll send you, I'll send you, uh, I'll send you the link. I wonder, do you, do you know who the interviewer might have been? Uh, yeah, I can tell you right now. The interview was by a gentleman named Simon Sargisian. What year? Oh gosh. Uh 
looks like it was September of 2018. So it's not that, it's not like we, I went back 10 years for this. That was just a couple of years ago. I know, I know, it was. <laughs> are, you sure it was I, are you losing your memory? No, you're not. <laughs> no. But that, um, that was you also the, talked in that interview, and we're not going to get into it now, I uh, um, just want to make sure that they were accurate, that, that you, uh, and I never knew this about you, but you, uh, you love uh, Yvonne Leans. You've always loved oh, Yvonne Leans. Oh, well, God, you'd have to be and not. You. No, not one of my top favorite Brazilian jazz artists. Oh, yeah. Two years ago, June, he played here in Detroit at, oh. at Orchestra Hall with, oh. a, with a small band, and I went, and I had orchestra, I had, I had box seats. I mean, oh. I, I spent a lot of money on that ticket because I wanted to see from the box. He was freaking awesome. And he and I both played the same year at the Detroit Jazz Fest. Oh. And I, so yeah, you, you need to bring up that you know Frank Malfitano because he's a the guy. That may have been the year Frank was here and booked me on that festival, but Yvonne Linz was also on that festival and he and I were sitting in the audience together watching, it might've been Kevin Mahogany, yeah. watching someone. And, and I was sitting next to Yvonne Linz and I was starstruck and I wanted to, I wanted to talk to him. I think I said, I think I said something, some kind words like, I'm a, I'm a major fan, I love your work. I didn't want to bug him because he was, he was watching He's chilling, he, man. He was chillaxing. Have, have you ever done any artwork uh, listening to his music? Because there's vocals there, no, but. Oh, yeah. But that's not true. I think I did. I think I cheated. And I. And <laughs> I think. I, you know what? I'm wrong. I did. You I cheated. Painted, I painted this one behind me oh. and the purple one. Oh. Bon lens because I have an outdoor studio and I paint outdoors in the summertime and I was listening to nothing I I I was listening to the Yvonne Lynn's channel. Oh yeah. A yeah. Pandora so, or Yeah. You are a trip. Nancy, you're a trip. I love you. Oh, I love you too. She's my We would she's be my in, in just horrible danger if we were to go out together. <laughs> We'll go out together Wait. and we'll drag, you know who you know who will drag with us? Judy Nemac. Oh, that would be just delightful. Oh, I use some of her scales for my uh for my students. I would love to do that. Oh, we'll with Judy Nemac. And you know who else is a painter? Judy Silvano. Joe Silvano. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, beautiful, then, beautiful painter. And then Nancy and I, as we started before we brought you on, we were touching on Tony Bennett. I heard. <laughs> I Tony, was yeah, Tony Bennett's love of painting. Um, Tony Bennett is a phenomenal visual artist, and so is Joni Mitchell, both of them. Wow. And um, Tony Bennett, up until I think a year ago, maybe he's still out there singing, or maybe until COVID. He, he, he has be been singing a little bit, yeah. He's and got I, Alzheimer's now, but he's able yeah. to get out and recall lyrics and sing. Yeah. Yeah. Who was the guy that had Alzheimer's that sang until the bitter end um, and they had to get, yank him off the stage? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, gosh. I don't know. Maybe somebody can answer that. That's a good, uh, that's a a good question. Guy. I don't know. Country, country guy. Country and Western. Country guy. You don't um, mean Willie. Not Willie. Nelson. No, not Willie. Oh, wait. Not, we Glenn, all no. have, not Glenn Campbell. That? Yes. Glenn oh, Campbell. God. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And I'll tell you who I opened for. I I did um, a lot of openers in the past few years. I opened for um, Earl Clue and Earl mm. Earl doesn't perform anymore because and he one of his very last shows I opened for. Mm. And um, just an amazing guy. An amazing guy. I've opened for some amazing artists. Uh, Jonathan Butler, Earl Clue, um, Gregory Porter. Opening for Gregory Porter was amazing. So, yeah, I saw a great picture. I'm not gonna 
I don't know. We really have time to find it and post. I, I did see there is a great picture of you and Gregory oh, Porter. It's off. It's on my website. It's on your website. Yeah. Why don't you, as we wrap up, promote promote your social media where people can 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 learn uh, uh, everything there is to know about you and, and check out some of your artwork. First of all, I, as we speak, I'm having an art website built, and it will be called KathyCousinsArt.com. Wonderful. And that, that's going to launch in about a week. Uh, it, all the finishing time. Everybody was bugging me for an online art thing, for an art website. Mm -hmm. My main website is KathyCousins.com. And that is basically music, bio, my clinics, my educational stuff that I've done. There's an art page on that site that will be coming down and there'll be a link on that page to the new art website. Good for you. A performance website called kathycousins.live. So you mm. can see a little bit of stuff there. Then my Instagram, my IG is at Kathy Cousins. Okay. And then people can find me on Facebook. I have two pages. Okay. It's Kathy Cousins and Kathy Cousins Music. So. Wow. So Kathy's got uh, many platforms covered. <laughs> and I've got four art fairs that are five art fairs that are all happening because they're all in Michigan. And, when do and you sleep? <laughs> Seriously. I get eight hours every night. Oh. Although, you know what? I paint a lot during the day and I, I balance my time. I work out, I paint, I write music, I'm in the studio, and I have to paint because I need inventory because I've got five art festivals this summer. One in, one in, at the end of May, Memorial Day weekend, or the last weekend, one in June, one in July, one in August, and one in September. Plus, I, I've got a solo art show. I've got a one-woman show in a theater in Michigan uh, at a little place called the Stones Throw Theater, and they're giving me an in-person reception uh, the last, I think it's August, April 30th. Yeah, people are doing in-person art receptions here now. They just can only let in so many at a time. Wow. Yeah, my I've goodness. Been going this whole time. Oh you my know. God. I can still remember when you were doing Rhapsody and Boop. Well, that's coming back. Oh, it is. <laughs> It's, it's relaunching with the Diva Jazz Orchestra, oh. um, and it will relaunch, hopefully, hopefully, in 2022 when the performing arts, um, when the performing arts venues, 500-seat yeah. type theaters can open up again safely. Okay. But, but I've got a book. I've got some amazing charts. Yeah. I'm of Memphis, and I'm going to have my charts tweaked a little bit and have and add to the mix and have a few more charts written for that show. And that, that goes great. There's a lot of anecdotal material where I speak yeah. and back screens of Betty Boop and the cartoons and the Fleischer. Great idea. Yeah, yeah. Abby Galloway, there's a whole website. It's called rhapsodyandboop.com. Well, this <sighs> has been um, so wonderful. You know? Very inspirational. Very, yeah. very inspirational. Thank you. Thank you for being Kathy Cousins. Thank you for being Nancy <laughs> and, and Eric. And you guys are, thank you for, for having me on your show. Well, you've inspired, you've, you've inspired oh. us. Go ahead. How many people tuned in? Oh, gosh. Five, six? No, we had around close to 20 people live and 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 then we're going to have yeah, you, you'll get a lot of hundreds more watching the uh the replay um and and uh it's because oh, of our just, time slot it's you inspired a ton of people tonight in the chat you inspired Nancy and I and 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 I'll tell you what I'm going to hold you to this I would love to see a painting a a a, a, a work of yours to one of oh, Nancy's for you. originals if Frank, if Frank Malfitano's festival relaunches he's gonna have me on are you listening frank and i will paint from the stage and if you don't have me on then i'll show up and i'll paint to other people's music because i do that too 
and um, hopefully things will get back to normal. And if oh. people are interested in a painting, I have a lot of work for sale. Okay. And I pay the shipping and I work, I, you know, if somebody's interested, by all means, email me. My email address is first initial last name, kcousins at icloud.com. Email me and I'll send you some, you know, images. And Excellent. Beautiful. Yeah. If you want to meet Fantastic. something real special while I'm here, come here. Come here are, are, we about, are we about to get another kitty? Mine was just uh, here Ooh, earlier. Come here. Come here. We got let, let, we we love we love seeing pets. Come on. Come on, Rue. Come here. No, oh, she's better. All right, we're gonna close with a little with a kitty. Is well, it a no, kitty? She went, she's hiding now, so okay. Okay. She can hear voices, so she thinks there's someone in the house. All right, you guys. Kathy, I thanks for inspiring us and for a, just a wonderful, wonderful chat, and uh, we wish you. <laughs> Nothing but the best. <laughs> and uh, we get to see your artwork as we say farewell. And uh, Nance, a pleasure as always. And, and uh, people can check out Kathy's website, her Instagram. And we look forward to uh, Kathy's next recording. We look forward to more great artwork in the future. And you just got her email address. Uh, so if you want to email Kathy, you can. And there's, hey, there we go. Hey, kitty. Ruby. Say hi, Ruby. Hi, Ruby. Ruby, Ruby my dear. Ruby's yeah. like, wait. <laughs> uh, Ruby has extra toes. Yeah, it's going to say them some big foots. Whoa. Wow. Hey, well, we wish, we wish you lots of love, Kathy, and lots of inspiration mm -hmm. and and take care of your little pretty, pretty girl. Is that a girl, Ruby? That's a girl, right? <laughs> Oh, Ruby's in my orange girl. Hey, you guys, thank you so much for the opportunity <laughs> and for having me on your show and yes. love you both. Stay well, stay healthy, go get your vaccines and we will meet up sometime soon. Until we meet again. We love you, we'll Kath. Again. Take Bye. care. Good, good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks, Nance. And we'll see you uh, next week. Tell us. Joe Corello. Joe Corello joins us next Sunday night. We'll see you yeah. back here at 7 o'clock. All right. Thanks, Nance. Love you, Kat. Take care. Bye, Bye -bye. guys. Bye. Can I